Hi everyone, it's Tom Mackey here. Now, just two days ago, I was persevering through Arctic conditions in the Canadian Rockies with temperatures down to uh, minus 21 degrees Celsius. And in comparison, this is like a summer's day here in the Cotswolds. Uh, you can see a little bit of snow in the ground. Uh, this is nothing, you know. It's funny when I came back, uh, flew over the country, you could see the snow everywhere and the chaos on the news that uh, has been happening with the, you know, the roads blocked and everything. This is, they would laugh at this in Canada. So what I'm doing here today in the Cotswolds, I came down here uh, to get a really lovely misty shot over uh, a classic Cotswolds village and uh, to get the sun rising over this village as well. Now, as I've been shooting here, I've got some really nice early dawn shots with some nice orange glow to the, uh, the sky. And I've looked at my sunrise sunset calculator and I see, I know where the sun's gonna come up just to the, over to the right of the scene. So I'm gonna place that in my frame. Yeah, it should be just the right of the church. Um, but in doing so, in waiting here for the sun to rise through the, looks like thick cloud at the horizon, I can see the clouds starting to light up on the rim of the, the top of these clouds. The sun, yes, is a little break through the clouds. I can see it coming up where I thought it would, but I'm gonna have to wait a little bit before that gets above the clouds. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shoot a panoramic as well. Uh, this would make a lovely panoramic because the, uh, the, the village and the landscape behind it with a little bit of snow on it and there's the sun let's go ahead and get this okay now what i've done here is i'm using a three-stop hard grad over the sky just to balance this out so i can bring up the detail in the village a little bit more and that's looking very good earlier on at uh, pre-dawn we had some um, had some we had one beautiful crescent moon over the landscape so I did some quick shots of that because I really want to put that in my scene um, at some stage because it wasn't quite where I wanted it to be now a lot of you've been asking how do you um, expose for the moon and put that into your shot there's a couple of ways you can do it you can double expose in the camera if you're if your camera allows that. This is the D850, so I've got a double exposure mode in here. Uh, it makes it very easy to place the moon where you want, and you can change lenses in between your exposures, which is ideal, or you can do it later in Photoshop. Okay, so what aperture am I using? F8, because I really have no foreground except for these sheep nibbling on this uh, fallen tree here. Uh, unfortunately, they're not in my shot, so I don't need to shoot at a smaller aperture. So I'm using my optimal aperture of f8. Um, I'm just looking behind me. It's typical. The clouds that you want in your scene are always behind you. And behind you right now, this sky is looking great over here. Everywhere around here, the sky looks fantastic, except over my scene. Isn't that just the way it goes? Okay. We've got the sun in there now, that's great. Oh, that looks fantastic. Okay, ISOs. Yes, thanks for the comment from somebody about how to pronounce ISOs. Um, so, what ISO am I using? 100, of course. Uh, I don't really need to uh, use anything faster than that. We're on a tripod, you want the least amount of noise in this. The sun's just now peeking up through that cloud coming out of the top. That's looking great. Okay, now you can probably see behind me, I've got a camera set up here as well. I'm doing a, a time lapse uh, from early dawn right through until uh, after that sun comes up and breaks that through that cloud, which is right now. That's great. So it'll be interesting to see what the time lapse looks like after this as well. Oh, this is actually looking quite good. Um, oh, now the jets just come into view. That's lovely. I see the airports are back in service after that uh, deluge of snow yesterday. So 
Uh, wonderful. That's one thing about when they shut down the airports. It's a landscape photographer's delight because there's no jet trails at all. Um, okay, so how would you meter something like this? It's obviously backlit. We're shooting straight into the sun. Uh, we've got a very dark village um, in the foreground. And as I mentioned, I've got a, a three-stop hard grad just coming down t above the horizon line just to balance that out. But I'm using matrix metering. So this is averaging the whole scene out. And a lot of people say, you know, do you actually meter through the filters? Of course you do. The filter is altering how the meter is going to read the scene. So it's darkening down the sky and it's balancing out between the foreground and the sky. So it's going to average all that out and give you uh, uh, an appropriate reading. So right now, I am underexposing this a little bit because I want to bring, I want to keep my highlights from going too much because I know, yes, that's nice because I've got a, a darker sky. I know I can bring the, any detail I need up in the foreground and post. Um, the main thing is with exposing this, you want to expose to make sure you have all the detail you can get, especially in your highlights. You don't want to blow your highlights. Now, I'll just check the histogram on this. Perfect. It's, uh, I've got great shadow detail. It's not going too far over to the left. My highlights over to the right are just coming to the end, so I, I've captured that really well. Now, okay, now I'm going to quickly do a pan stitch. So I'm at a 50th of a second at F8. So I am going to set this to manual, go to 50th of a second at F8, and give it a little bit more room to that side. Take a picture of my finger first. That's the first shot right there, 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 and there. And it's last shot there. Now let's just check that. Okay, now we're starting to get a little bit of flare as that sun is burning through those clouds. So now the sun is starting to flare out a little bit too much now. So uh, I've had the optimal amount of light. So it's, um, it's time to actually look for something different. Now we have a scene over here to our right. Uh, with some sheep in the foreground I'm just, and some lovely clouds. So I'm going to try to recompose and, and get a shot like that too. Okay. So as you can see, I need a little bit of height uh, to get this scene just so I can um, separate the sheep, this sort of uh, hillside going down into the valley and then coming up to the next um, uh, landscape in the background. So this little bit of height standing on this uh, dead tree just does the trick. Now, again, what I've done here, because I'm actually um, uh, at a right angle to the sun, this polarizes beautifully. So I put a polarizer on it's helping to bring these clouds out, and I, I still have my three-stop hard grad on this, uh, just to balance that out between the, um, the sheep in the foreground and the sky. Now, working with animals and kids, I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, difficult, they never do what you want them to do when you want them to. Now I've got, I'm working on here, let's see, one, two, three, four, five sheep in the foreground here that like to stand together. That's great to keep warm, but not so great for pictures. I need to get them separated so it looks better in the scene. Now I've got them down in the right-hand corner, or the, rather the left-hand corner, and they're moving a little bit too much to the center, so let's recompose this. Okay, now they're starting to separate a little bit more. Right now I've got these big woolly bums and one or two heads, that's it. Uh, not ideal. Let's just take that just in case I don't get this uh, the way I want it. So, uh, yeah, come on. That's it. One's looking at me there. Okay, now they're separating. That's better. That's much better now. 
Okay, I think I've got everything uh, that I need from up here. I better get down before I fall down. And then uh, we'll wrap things up here. Okay, well, I think that was a successful morning. I mean, I've got uh, probably three shots out of this. We've got the pan. We have the, the still shot with the, um, the pre-dawn with hopefully the moon, if I can pull that out of the bag. If you don't see it in uh, the end shot, then you know it went horribly wrong. And the sun coming up over the village. Uh, and then finally, yes, the, the sheet behind me with that landscape. So it's nice to get all those shots from just this one spot. I'm going to defrost and go find a nice Cotswolds breakfast. Thanks for joining me today. Make sure you subscribe to us if you haven't already done so. Hit that like button and I'll see you again soon in the next video. Bye for now.